Git is one of the rare universal tools that transcends the typical tech boundaries. These days, it's about the closest thing to a must-have skill. Whether you are or plan on becoming a web developer or a data scientist, a game engineer, a front-end or back-end, iOS or Android developer, it doesn't really matter, you'll need to know Git, the world's most popular version control system. Millions of coders around the world use Git and GitHub to track changes and collaborate. And it's not just coders. These days, scientists, governments, writers, and even composers are using Git and GitHub. So that's all great. The problem is that Git isn't exactly the friendliest tool to learn. It's not always that intuitive. But don't worry, that's what this course is for. Hey there, my name is Colt Steele. I'm a bootcamp instructor who has helped thousands of students land jobs and change careers. So along with my pet chickens, cats, and hundreds of different diagrams, demos, and exercises, I'll be teaching you everything you could possibly need to know about Git and GitHub. We start with all the Git basics. Committing, and branching, merging, and diffing. We talk about stashing, and a whole bunch more. Then we shift focus to GitHub and using Git for collaboration. We discuss commonly used collaboration workflows, including feature branching, forking and cloning, making pull requests, and a whole bunch more. Then we cover some more advanced topics, like rebasing and working with annotated tags, squashing and setting up custom aliases. We even dive deep into how Git works behind the scenes and how it stores data. So whether you're a complete beginner looking to learn Git, or you're an established user who needs a refresher on the trickier bits, check out this course. That is actually a Git joke. Check out, you know what, you probably may not know that yet. And I think we're done here now. Okay, cu cut the music, cut it. Stop the, mu stop the music. Hey everyone, me and some of my stock asset friends here are very happy to welcome you to the Git and GitHub Bootcamp. So none of these people are my real friends, but they are free images from my software, which is pretty good too. And they'll be making some appearances throughout the course in my diagrams. Anyway, these fine folks are actually me. This is me here. Hello, everyone. My name is Colt Steele. Um, I never know how much detail to go into in my background, but I'll say that I've been teaching people how to program for almost a decade. I helped thousands of people change careers in my in-person boot camps, but I've also reached over a million students online. Ugh, I always feel a bit weird talking about it, but you can always check out my LinkedIn or my uh, instructor bio if you want more information. All that really matters is that I actually reach and it's a, a decree for the teacher. So I hope you enjoy the course. I've spent a lot of time trying to get this course. So if you're watching this, you probably already know that Git is this amazing tool that along with GitHub enables uh, and empowers millions and millions of users uh, and companies ranging from tiny startups all the way up to Fortune 50 companies to build things together to collaborate uh, and to maintain applications. So you probably already know that and know it. they know it's crucial, yet it often goes ignored. Uh, nice to learn at the beginning. I totally get why a lot of people prioritize learning JavaScript or Python or pretty much Ent. But the truth is, this is a very annoying expression. At the best time to learn Git is yesterday. Somebody told me something very similar, uh, a neighbor actually, on fruit trees is five years ago. Or something like that. It's it's uh, natural to want to punch that. That's and strength. You just roll your eyes. But there is some truth to this. But also, there's a, a, a piece and second best time to get to hey. Anyway, the, the point is that it's very important to learn uh, along whatever journey you're on. Uh, the sooner you learn it, the better. Because it's not just about learning this. that takes some time, but you know, you can watch a video or a course in the basics, but it takes more work. There's more than just just learn to the real work comes with part two or calling step two and breathing git it needs to become second nature git be flow so that takes time right that's why the best time to learn git is yesterday blah that's the goal of this course to help git become second nature so not just to teach you the basics it's also helping you just learn and live git. breathe git in a user and that takes time and it takes practice more than, although it's a ton of lectures, obviously, that is core pieces of the course. It has to be educational, and the syntax work, but also there are uh, quite a few exercises and, and sort of steer you uh, becoming one with Git. 
So I highly recommend them out in a separate video. I want to talk, I tried to make it somewhat interesting uh, and entertain, but also visually, I think making diagrams and get a lot from thinking about in a visual way. So I spent a lot of time in the and I'll say right now, welcome to the course, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll end this welcome video with not at all important note. In my courses, I often reference my plugins. Throughout my courses, I'll use their name in different files or in exercises, in diagrams, and students inevitably demand photos or videos of my chickens. So I'm just going to get it out of the way here. I want to see here they are. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the course. So next up, I'd like to talk about the course curriculum and what we cover, and I'll try to break it down into some smaller pieces, because on the surface, we cover quite a few topics related to Git and Git. So there's always a pressure, honestly, in these courses to fit as many related topics as possible into a course just to compete or to stand out in some way. And yeah, I can't ignore that, but I do want to try my best to make it very clear what actually matters uh, and what is fundamental, because not all of this stuff you see in front of you, and there's likely to be more by the way that are actually watching this, uh, there will be more videos or more additional sections added towards the end because students request them. But anyway, uh, not all of these are critical. So there's a couple of chunks, I guess, I would, I would break things down into. The first bit is all about the core functionality of Git, working with the very basics, things like adding and committing and creating repositories, git log, git status, creating branches, checking out, switching, merging. That is your core git toolbox. And then we talk about, uh, I'm calling it next level git, but it's not crazy difficult stuff. It's just a couple of git topics that won't come up as often. They're not part of your day-to-day -day git life, but they are very important. So we talk about diffing, the git diff command, stashing, and then we talk about about quite a few ways of time traveling in Git or undoing changes. Git revert, Git reset, Git restore, undoing changes and going back to old work and detaching and reattaching the head. And there's quite a bit of stuff in that section. Uh, so it's important, but it's just not part of this Git core. Then we move on to GitHub and collaboration. So I've grouped together four sections here. I don't really have a nice title for it, but we basically learn about the basics of GitHub, working with GitHub, our code up on GitHub, getting stuff down from GitHub. We talk about things like uh, GitHub pages, GitHub gists, and collaboration workflows. That's a very significant chunk of this course. A lot of time on that, talking about the different ways that you could use Git with a team to collaborate along with GitHub and different structures, different strategies you can employ. There's not just one way, and they all have some and strengths and weaknesses. So I demonstrate those and spend a lot of time talking about it. It's pretty important stuff. Uh, so I put that together with GitHub. And then after that, it's kind of just a mixture of other Git stuff that I felt compelled to include. And these are some of the more advanced topics or the niche topics. So this includes things like rebasing, cleaning up your Git history with interactive rebasing, squashing, dropping, fixing up, uh, all sorts of sort of fun parts in my opinion about tags, we talk about uh, how Git works behind the scenes and hashing. Uh, we cover things like uh, Git objects, Git blobs, Git trees. So there's stuff in here that you could go your whole as a Git user without knowing. I think it's worth giving you the option at least uh, to check it out if you're curious. We talk about creating custom aliases and shortcuts and ref logs. That's a fun one. I'm happy with how that section turned out. Uh, and as I said, there's likely to be more if you scroll down right now through the curriculum. Uh, there's likely more content in the course that's not included here. So to recap this, there's quite a bit. Um, and it's all Git and GitHub oriented. But there's this first chunk that is the core of Git on its own. 
Then we talk about some next level Git topics that are absolutely important to know, but they're not part of your typical hour to hour or day to day use case for Git, or they might not be. And then we talk about GitHub and collaboration workflows. And then it's just a, a bunch of other Git topics at the end that I had a lot of fun recording. Okay. Next up, I'd like to talk a little bit about the exercises in the course. Uh, a very important piece, easy to overlook as a student, but uh, I think are, are very important to really understanding and living and breathing. You have to practice it. It's not just the syntax. So throughout the course, uh, there are exercises sprinkled in. And I have to be honest, creating these exercises is not always that easy because unlike other things that I teach, CSS or JavaScript or Python, where I can ask students to make something and very clearly set out, you know, here are the expectations, make this thing. With Git, it's not really about making things, it's about the workflows. So I had to get pretty creative or I tried my best to come up with exercises. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I just want to show you where to find them and the basics of how they work. So the exercises are at the end of sections. So for example, this is a section intro to GitHub. The very last video is GitHub basics exercise, or here's uh, undoing changes in history. The last video is undoing changes exercise. So there are videos where I explain the exercise. Let me mute there. So I explain how it works uh, and what I'm expecting you to do. And then I go ahead and do it myself as sort of a solution. Uh, but I always recommend you try it yourself first. And then if you want the actual exercise document for every single one of these in resources, you'll find a link, click it, and it will take you to the exercise document that I created. So it has the instructions, uh, the different files. There might be some code that I give you, uh, the different expectations, step-by-step, -step, what I'm asking you to do. So one of the documents exists for every exercise in the course, and you'll find it attached to the exercise video. So that's where you can find them. Again, I, I hope that you get something out of them. The only way you'll know to actually attempt them. So I really encourage you to do this uh, in person when I teach Git. The most learning without a doubt happens when students actually try using it and just get practice. It's a weird thing to watch somebody use Git. Uh, you really need to do it yourself to get anything out of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the exercise. Okay, so let's begin with a very important question. What exactly is Git? So Git is what's known as a version control system, sometimes abbreviated as VCS. Not only is it a VCS, it's actually the world's most popular version control system. So what exactly is a version control system? It doesn't sound all that glamorous. Essentially, version control is software that helps track and manage changes to a set of files over time. Also, it doesn't sound all that glamorous or exciting, but hugely important. Think of companies like Facebook or Google with huge code bases, thousands of files, and thousands of they're all working in parallel and making changes day to day. How do you manage those and track those changes and combine them and undo changes? That is the role of a version control system like it. In general, most version control systems allow things like uh, revisiting earlier versions of files, comparing changes made between different versions and different files, undoing changes, sharing changes with other people. Git does this and more. We're going to go into this in just a little bit, but that's a general intro to this concept of version control. And to be clear, Git is just one of many version control options out there. Over the years, um, they've kind of been gone, but some of the more well-known ones include Subversion, CVS, and Mercurial. And they all have similar goals of helping developers or helping users track changes projects over time, but they do have significant differences in how they operate, the syntax, and how they achieve goals. But the good news for us, I mean, obviously this is a Git course, so we're going to learn Git, but uh, there's a good reason to learn Git. It is the clear winner if there ever was a version control system war. Uh, Git is clearly the most popular these days. This is the most recent data I could find from three years ago. 2018 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, nearly 90% of respondents reported that Git was their version control system of choice. And the thing is, in the last few years, the survey has just stopped asking this question. It's abandoned it uh, because it's just so clear that the number is probably more like 95% these days uh, of developers that use Git. So we're here to learn. That's good news for us. Uh, I'll end by just showing you what Git calls itself on the Git homepage. 
It's a free and open source distributed version control system designed to handle every small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. It's easy to learn. Mm, we'll see about that. It's, it's not bad to learn, but I wouldn't say it's painless. And it has a tiny footprint with lightning fast performance. It outclasses other tools like Subversion, CVS. Oh boy, look at that. Trash talking competition. Anyway, the stuff we care about is up here. It is a version control system. That is at its core. It helps users manage changes to projects over time. In the next video, we'll talk concrete terms about what so now that we know that git is a version control system a popular one at that let's talk more about the specific features what does it do for us so in this slide we can see some of the main things git helps us with it helps track changes across files compare versions of a, a project time travel back to old versions take a peek at what something looks like a year ago take a look at facebook's code base today compared to two days ago, uh, go back to a previous version if we mess something up, uh, combine different changes between versions, between different files, between different collaborators, and that's probably the most important part, collaborate and share changes. Git facilitates collaboration between a team of users, of developers, of writers, whatever people are doing with Git. Git facilitates collaborating and sharing those changes between individual people. So here's a very, very simple explanation. Um, if you've ever played video games, like I have, uh, there are some games that allow you to make save points, little checkpoints you can come back to. And uh, I guess this game games that go back wherever your last save was. So I was save pretty much before anything. <laughs> uh, so I would save and then get to some whole bodies, even though I like them. I die, but that's okay. I don't get it. I say, go back. That is the simplest explanation of Git uh, and what it allows us to do. Put up these checkpoints. You can screw things up entirely in code base or of a project. Empty all the files out. Delete the files. But with these checkpoints, we can just go back. I didn't know Git really at the time. So something new. So I'd save as, or even more variations. V or engine or reorder. Uh, I would save. I just have one essay. Uh, I want to be able to track versions. It's just part of the process. And end up with then inevitably actually, you know, for real, this is the one print this, what I did in high school and college all the time. So Git helps the very trivial situation, but imagine thousands of developers collaborating on a project where they're working on mill time and having these different versions. And here, for example, hold that up. So right now it's empty. Checkpoints. So points are like save files I can go back to. So okay. initialize project. There's nothing else. Nav bar up top. So I make a new checkpoint. Add top and intent. So I add whatever or something. So I add some content. Add more. And I add point. This workflow is very fair. You do something in a project. If you're seeing points, we'll learn what they are and how you do it, of course. Uh, and then you keep working. Here, I change the theme entirely. A dark theme, new colors, new everything. I add a checkpoint. So I forgot to mention, I work not alone. Uh, I'm not the one making these decisions, right? What, what stays, if we want this theme or not, or if we want this theme here. But anyway, I do some more work. I alter the nav bar color. I make it yellow. I add... And then I show it to my boss. Realistically, you don't show. There's a process for approving or rejecting changes. But anyway, in this implicit world, or maybe not even angry, she just says, you know what? These colors suck. We, we can't move forward with that. Hey, I points. So this is what it looked like at this checkpoint, but I can go backwards too. Go from four, the time I added the dark theme. Now we're back to this light theme. And then I could even ran off working from this point and create a new sort of fork where I'm lying. So this work's not lost. I'm just not doing it right now. I'm working. A, a, so I added more content and see that there. So I had two rows content now. I've picked up development point in time. So I added a row, uh, maybe I added down there. So we get a new checkpoint if I want to add a checkpoint. And then I could switch back to what I had earlier at this point. I can toggle and can say, go all the way back to first out of the nav bar or go all the way 
I do when I update the bar, I made it yellow or yeah. Twitter. I can hop around and I can present both to my boss. They both can exist, uh, which is the crazy part. Git helps us manage all these versions. So I can switch back to this dark mode checkpoint, but what's even crazy is combine these checkpoints, the work, the chain between the two. So this dark mode at the colors and add footer had all this extra content with a in a third row. So I combined them to end up with footer and a third row of content and colors. So I now have a hybrid. And that's exactly the sort of thing that helps us. This is an example. But imagine now I'm working on a project. It's not just me. There's some people. There's lots of files, lots of versions. How do we coordinate all those changes? Right? We don't all just work on in silos on our own. We need to combine that back in or whatever we're working on, we share those changes. So it's this times hundreds and hundreds often at a large company. Okay. So that's the basic idea of in what I'm trying to visualize it for you. Next up, I guess, totally optional. I'm going to talk about the history. While it is lovely being able to initialize a new repo, we still don't know how to do anything inside of those repos. Uh, but that's going to change because we're about to talk about the most fundamental Git workflow, the bread and butter of which is committing. So just like before, we're going to start with a quick high level conceptual overview intro to the concept of committing, which is what this video is. And then I'll show you the associated commands. There's two that we need to talk about in the next couple of videos. So let's begin by answering a simple question. What is committing or what is a git commit? Well, early in this course, I showed these slides. I spent kind of a long time making them. Uh, on the top right hand corner, we have a website building, and you can go. Same some progress. I'm adding checkpoints that was used to introduce these. A checkpoint, a snapshot of my project in moment with a little message like add top nav bar or add first row con or change to dark theme. Well, each one of these checkpoints is action we call a commit. A checkpoint early on, before we actually start running its own, a commit doesn't really sound like much in my experience. And I one of these checkpoints in a Git repository. And typically, a single Git repository commits one after another. And eventually, we'll learn how to go back to earlier commits, how to undo commits, how to just take a peek at an earlier now we'll focus on making these checkpoints. How do we do some stuff? Add a feature to a website, make a commit, and then do some make a commit, do some more stuff, make a commit. That is our goal for the next couple of videos. I'll show you uh, an existing repository that I have in this is Git Kraken. Uh, camp a couple of times. What I'm looking at right here with this GUI is a lit all the order. And actually there's more than one contributor, so it's not just me. So you can see here's the frame, all the way up to some of the more recent ones. So there's what, over a hundred, maybe 150 at least, individual comes. Each one of them is a checkpoint time. And the new work that I did, the new changes, and it includes a little message you know, refactor, async, error handler, and post methods, or something very silly and 
looking like commits or, you know, add Mapbox CSS back to some style sheet. Whatever that message is, is up to me. But there is a message along with this snapshot of my project. In a crucial under that it's not the same file. It's actually, think of it as something that's built on top of things. We make first and save them to our files before we can even commit. So we use term checkpoint or save point, but we're not talking about just save a file. That has nothing to do with Git. We save files all the time. But once we have made changes, we can then group them together into a commit. So on the right hand side, I'm showing a particular commit that includes changes to five, well, four different files. Folders can group that all together into a commit. But first, we have written some new code in one of these files and, sit, and then written more code in another one. And sit, then a commit. And the next thing that you need to know about making a commit is that it's actually a multi. It's not a split that says commit, commit, commit. Instead, the immediate step where we actually call out the particular changes that we've made to commit. And this allows us to selectively make commits, which is really nice. For example, uh, imagine I've been working all day or all morning on some project. A lot of time working on this project and I made changes to seven different files. You can see I deleted a file, I modified two files, I created four files. And instead of just making one generic commit that just says checkpoint right now, Instead, I can actually call out some of these and group them together based upon the actual that I can. I might group together those first three changes. I deleted a file HTML and then I changed files called about HTML and about CSS. The one thing that I did across three files, I, I added some new teamers to our about page, whatever the you know about page looks like. So that was one commit. Then these other four changes and group them into a separate standalone commit. So what about when I say there's an intermediate step and select certain changes and make with those just so we don't just say commit, commit, commit. Instead, we're getting in there with and this and this. Now we're gonna commit those changes. So commit our two associates. And we're going to first in the next video called add. And then the second is get mint. And we'll use get in order to highlight or select those changes that we want to include in the upcoming commit. So a commit is a checkpoint in time. It's a snapshot of changes in our repository. Eventually able to go back to earlier commits, undo commits, merge commits. A bunch of do for just focused on plotting ahead and leaving a trail of commits behind, a trail of checkpoints. And when we make one of these snapshots, one of these commits, we can call out the specific changes that commit rather than including all changes in our project. We can that. That's the first step, and then commit them. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do that first bit. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the git commit command, which is the command we actually use to make it using whatever changes we have previously staged. But before we actually run the command, and I definitely recommend you don't run git commit just yet, I'll explain why. Before we run it, we need to discuss commit messages. Whenever we make a commit, git expects us to include a message that describes or summarizes the changes included in that snapshot in the given commit. For example, I grouped together these files, the navbar changes, I staged them. When I committed in this example, I added a message, add branded navbar. Or here, I changed three, I staged them, I committed with the message, add team members to about page. So we'll talk more about writing good commit messages and what makes a good commit message. But for now, just know that a commit message should summarize the changes included in that commit. So over here, uh, on our first novel, the project that I've been working on, 
these two files, these two changes, are really just the creation of those files. So a, a commit message might be something like start novel or utilize characters and outline or begin work on characters and outline. Nothing super detailed because it's a very minor commit. So now let's talk about actually running the git commit command. And again, I want to emphasize, I recommend you don't run it just yet. This is one option, git space commit. And this will make a commit with whatever changes have been staged. However, it's going to try and use your default editor, whatever your default editor is on your machine. And most or any students don't have one configured, which is problematic because it will open up in something called Vim, which is a very, very not beginner friendly, very crazy, confusing editor in your terminal. And if you don't know how to get out of Vim, it can be very confusing. Um, if you happen to get in there, it's colon Q will get you out of there. Anyway, I don't recommend you run this yet. There's another variant. Rather than git commit, which will pop up your editor and ask you for your message, we can just give git the message at the same time. So this dash m flag, git commit dash m, and then we pr uh, provide message in quotes. Git will use that message that we provide and make a commit with it, rather than this flavor, which asks us for a message as a secondary step. At the end of the day, there is no difference in the generated commit, assuming you type the same message. It's just two different ways of getting to that same destination. So I always recommend beginners start with this. Uh, you don't have to configure an editor. You don't have to worry about Vim or another text editor. All you do is provide your message and hit enter. Okay, dash M, I believe it stands for message, or at least that's what I tell myself it stands for. It makes sense. Uh, commit dash M and then a message. So let's try it over here. Uh, I have my, my changes are staged. I'm ready to make my first commit. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Git commit dash M and then something simple that summarizes what I've done in this commit. How about something like start work on outline and basic characters or maybe just main characters? Sure, start work on outline and main characters and then I'll hit enter. Okay. So now what happens here? Well, let's type git status. This is what I saw a moment ago. Changes to be committed, no commits. Now when I type git status, nothing to commit, working tree clean. So this phrase, working tree clean, means that basically everything I've done in my folder, in the working directory, git knows about and git has been tracking and it, it's up to date. Everything is in sync. But as soon as I change a file, the working tree is no longer clean, which is not a bad thing, but yeah, all that it means. So I've now made my very first commit, first of many. In the next video, we'll continue by adding and committing and adding and committing. We'll get more practice. I'm going to stop this video here just to keep it brief. Uh, but just to reiterate, when we make a commit, we provide a message. I recommend for now using the dash M flag to provide the message in line. Otherwise, if you use it's a regular old git commit command. Uh, you can run into some trouble if you haven't configured your editor. And I'll link a video to show you how to configure that uh, if you're interested, but it's not something you need to worry about for now. What did you do provide should summarize the changes that are included in the commit. And later on, I'll have a video on best practices for commit messages. So that's it for this video. Next up, we'll get more practice doing the same process. Change some this video is completely 100 million trillion percent optional. Please, uh, if you don't care to watch it, don't. We're not going to learn any new commands or any new syntax. All that I'm going to do is show uh, a little peek behind the scenes in Git. We're going to take a look at that .git directory and I'll show you proof of head, how it works, or the fact that it's just referencing a branch and that each branch reference is referencing a commit. All right, so let's go ahead and and hop over here to our road trip playlist. We are on this 2000s branch. Let's go back faster. It's very simple. We have two commits it. And we can see that head is referring to master because we're on the master branch. And master branch is pointing to this commit. This is the most recent commit. Let's take a look at this commit hash. It starts with 93E. Let's remember that 93ED. 93 Okay. So remember that. Now, remember we have this header called dot .git. It's just cd dot .git. We have this thing called head. 
And head, if I take a look, I'm just gonna use the cat command. This other thing, refs slash heads slash master. So in other this is, I'll simplify it. Head is pointing to the master branch. Switch, switch uh, oldies. Whoops, can't do that from here. I have to back out. Now if I switch, because I was in the dot get directory, it gets very confused. Get switch to old. And now I take a look again. So I'll do cats dot get slash head. Now it's said that folder. See this, it now references oldies. So if I switch back to master and I take a look at head, it's now master. So that thing, that file called head is just referencing a particular branch. Now this thing here, refs slash heads slash refs slash heads slash uh, oldies right here, they actually reference a particular command. So let's take a look. I'm going to open up the dot git directory now. Open dot git directory just in finder here. And let's take a look at this refs slash head slash master. So refs heads, and you'll see there's a file for every drive. And in each one of these files, there's just one thing. Open it to editor. It's just a commit hash. It's just a pointer particular pointing to one of those branch. So remember head was refs slash heads slash master. That's what it had inside. And then if we look at what that actually is, it's a commit 93 E E that is where my branch left off. That's where the bookmark for master branches. Now, if I switch to the oldies branch, nothing changes in this master reference. Right? So that's my chain. So we could take a look at the cat get there it is slash oldies. It says the last commit on the oldies branch is seven FFD. And if we type get log, that's exactly what we see. F E, right? So we can see that all over this, you know, I have this 2000 and it says the last commit on there, zero two F four. Okay, branch, get switch, 2000s. Log, there it is, 02F4. So one of these is like a bookmark. It's one of these. So we happen to have, what, five of them instead of two in this document. For commit, it just stores that commit hash in a file. And then head changes. That right here changes depending on what we have checked out, which branch. Currently. Again, this really doesn't matter if you understand it or not. In terms of using Git, it's not a big deal. It means you understand that head is just whatever you're currently checked out on, whatever you're, what branch you're on. Uh, but behind the scenes, this is the mechanism. It's just a file and it references a particular reference. We look at those branch references. They in turn refer to a particular commit. So pretty simple when you look at it this way. So hopefully this diagram is this starts to sort of congeal branch reference point commit. This one points to a different commit head points to one of those branch references. So we can stay on dark mode or I could toggle back to master, but these stay the same branch reference. They both say some head is all that's changing. Tell more work and okay. anyway, so I'm going to stop. Now that we have a lot of practice making branches and switching between them, let's tackle merging branches, one of the essential features of working with branches. So the whole idea here is that with branches, we can work within these self-contained contexts. We can work on different things in parallel, but usually we want to incorporate some of what we've done into another branch, right? We don't just work in a separate context and continue to work in a new separate context. Every time we work on something, we need to combine some of the stuff we're doing. If you're working on a feature and I'm working on a feature and we work at the same company at some points, if both of those features are, are goes, they're good features. We want to incorporate them. You're going to need to merge your feature into some branch that I can get. And I need to merge my feature in into some branch that you can get. 
And then sometimes we do just abandon a branch uh, and we, we don't merge it. But if things go well, a lot of the time we combine work from one branch into another. So there's a command we use called git merge. I'll show it in just a moment. For them, whatever you call it, trunk, whatever you, a lot of people treat it as the source of truth or the, um, the most stable build of an application where you don't want to screw anything up. You don't do any experience on It'll work on a feature branch. And then that work can then be incorporated back, back in the if it's deemed appropriate, you know, it's, it's solid and it's gone through some different and let's merge it back into master. But the work itself is done on a feature branch. So again, X company works on their own feature branch for each feature and then potentially merges them back into master. So there's a couple of things that can be confusing about merging. Uh, I try and boil it down to these two principles. We merge specific commits. So we don't pick one commit and a segment and join together branches. And the second piece is that we always merge based on the current head branch. We merge to where we are, to where head is. So here's a simple example, two branches in this example, master branch and a bug fix branch. And on this bug fix branch, down, I have some commits, right? I've derived from master and I've added two commits as I'm fixing this bug. And now merge that work into master. So I want these two commits I want on master. So the workflow here is to first switch or work out branch terms of changes into. We need to move over to the receiving branch. Merge these gets into master. I need to switch master. So two, get switch master, head now point master. And then the second step is to use the git merge command. And I'll show you a actual demo of this in the next video. But for now, we're going to use git merge and then some branch name. And that will merge changes from the, branch, the current branch that we're on. So this right here, git merge bug fix, will take them and merge them into whatever branch we're on, which in these diagrams is master. So we, and then I run git merge bug fix. And you can see Mask is now pointing at this commit. So it went from there to there. Now this is the merge the rest of this section with other types. Um, here's a, a e way to this, right? These colors and this di uh, diagonal line are just to actually these, just, but really they're just commits with different pointers at different commits. Right? So commits, at least with the way this branch works. We had master, we branched off. Admits. Now, all that when we merged was catch up. We moved master up to that same commit. This is called a fast forward merge. Because we have this branch to catch up. It just fast forwarded a couple of commits. There was a demo on the master branch. Now, sometimes that will be the case. So, there will be a demo commit here that don't exist on bug fix. And that is trickier to merge. And that's time to but for our first example we're dealing with these fast forward merges so you have two branches, one of the branches just has additional commits that the first branch doesn't have so touch it's just a matter of moving that pointer forward. that's what the git merge command does in this, this the merge bug fix if we're on the master branch moves that pointer up to bug fix so now master has all history. It has the work that it had from before, but also the work from bug fix. Okay. So again, this is called a fast forward merge. Uh, they're nice and simple. In next video, I'm one, we'll get some practice with our playlist example. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, generating a merge conflict and then resolving and I'm going to keep working with our simple uh, repository. Currently, it has two branches, master and ABBA. But I'm actually going to delete the ABBA branch because I merged in those changes and let's say I'm done with it. So I've shown this, but basically it dash D. And, then, and you want to make sure you're not on that branch. So I have this ABBA branch on it. So git branch 
full scrap. And it's gone. So I had all this merged into master. So it doesn't mean uh, when I first introduced how to because we hadn't learned how to merge changes in, but now everything is merged in into capital D. Okay, so now we have just the map. Okay. Now we do to demonstrate merge conflicts is I'm going to make two branches. I'll do forward through a lot of it. One for our for Bjorn, and for uh, I don't know Serena, and they're going to each have their own. So they make a playlist for the road trip. And they're definitely not going to agree. Uh, so they'll make their own playlist on their own branch, and then I'll merge them together when we're ready for our road trip. So I'll start by making Serena. To go get switch dash C Serena. Okay. And then um, I'll also go back to master. get switch master, and then I'll make the other branch get switch dash C for Bjorn. All right. So now we have two branches. Well, we have three, but we have two that we just made. Bjorn, all referring to the same spot matter currently is. So now we're going to show over Bjorn. So let's just work on Bjorn's branch. Bjorn really does not like but much likes Dancing Queen. So he's going to keep Dancing Queen. Okay. Then, uh, we're going to add some music in that Bjorn, Bjorn likes a band called Ginsard Wood. So he adds that in. We'll make a commit for him, or he makes a commit. I'll just do it here. Stage all changes. So King, Gizzard, Lizard with song. All right. So we're on the horn branch. It's one. Oh, what you do? He likes the reds both. There are two songs. In the stroke. Okay. Stage this. Add two stroke songs. Okay. Then simultaneously, Serena is working on her branch. And she likes Ava quite a bit. She even as far as to add another Ava song in. Uh, what is it? Gimme, I think, by Ava. Okay, so she makes that commit. Stages her change. Okay, and she does one more change. What else does she like? She likes Dolly Parton. So she adds, here you come again. Okay. So she adds that change, she stages it, she commits, add one dolly part. So now when we take a look, if we ignore everything I did earlier, we look here and above, you can see that we have two branches. We're ignoring matter. We have Serena and Bjorn. And Serena has two commits that don't exist on Bjorn. And Bjorn that don't exist on Serena. But Unlike the previous merge we did, we were merging this ABBA branch with the master branch. There were no conflicts there. There are definitely conflicts because we're editing the same file and same line. So when I switch, right, I'll switch one more time from Serena now to Bjorn. Uh, we can see there's a lot of changes going on in there. So when I try to shoot. So now I decide where I want to merge. I still have separate Continue to have separate. Oh, so make like a third branch. I'll call that, uh, what should it be? Get switch dash e combination or just combo. And I'm branching from Bjorn. That's where I am now. So, so it will Bjorn. And then I can merge in the changes from Serena. Okay. So now I have this new combo branch. It's at the same spot, right, as Bjorn. Referring Submit. Now I'm going to merge in Serena. So here we are. I'm on combo. Same as the merge. And here we go. It tries to auto merge. Nope. Conflict. Merge conflict in songs.txt. Automatic merge failed. Fix conflicts and then commit the result. So we go to our editor. I'm using VS Code. You can see it does some nice highlighting for me. And we have those markers I mentioned. So you can can be head right here from that line down to here, those equal signs is we had the branch. In our case, it was the combo branch. So we can see it. It's Bjorn changes. And then here, this is the change or the changes we had coming in from the Serena branch. And I decide oh, just Serena stuff. Do I want just Bjorn's? No, I want both. So what we do is uh, I'm going to delete these markers. We get rid of those. So all of that, and I'm going to keep 
you know, where they have overlap, for example, Dancing Queen is on both of them. I don't want Dancing Queen twice. So I'm going to do that. And otherwise, I think everything is... The point is, it's up to me. It's totally up to me what I want to keep and don't keep. And in case, I mean, if we're doing a playlist, two friends, it's fair, it's equitable to allow them both, <laughs> just take both of their songs and combine them. Um, but if I wanted to, I could say, well, I'm get rid of you, Bjorn. And I could do that. I could just get rid of that and say, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to keep both of their songs in there, and I just remove the duplicate, which is interesting. Now I save. So go back to this guide here. First step. When the file edit files, third, remove the conflict markers. We did that. Fourth, add the changes and make a commit. So, whoops, I need to go back to my terminal. It gets status, and it tells us we're on this branch combo, unmerged paths. It tells us songs txt file has been modified. So now we just changes. Okay, commit dash m conflicts or merge. I'll just do resolve conflicts to keep it short and commit is. This commit is us merging. Okay. So now let's head over to our little visualization here. It looks exactly the same we had earlier. It's the same process, right? We merged this branch Serena into this new merge commit. The difference is that we had to do some work to make commit. A commit message like we did a couple of videos ago. Instead, we actually had to get into a file changes. We had to look at those markers that get ads for us things and to keep and then save now. but now that conflict has been resolved and we're on our new branch combo watching here you commits from serena and the conflicts there that we manually resolved